Hey there everybody in the FFBE Global Facebook group and hello to everybody who sees this video on YouTube as well. Welcome to this week's episode of Ask an Old Mog where we take questions from the Global Facebook group, usually, and try and answer them in a visual way to help people learn more about mechanics of the game, kind of how to play, how to like make decisions about what you're doing in the game. Uh, that way you can learn to kind of play the way you want to play and uh, have more fun doing trials and content in the game. Uh, this week we have one such question uh, that came from the global Facebook group I actually um, you know got got a comment on my last video in the Facebook group and that's where this question came from so that that's exciting um, so let's go ahead and dive into that question and see what we got a uh, question came from Catherine how do you break an enemy or a boss I mean the normal one with a break line under the HP line not in clash of wills what skills do I need uh, and what units um, and so it sounds like you're talking a lot about the difference between breaks, right? And break gauges. And so we'll talk a little bit about the difference between breaks and break gauges here in just a minute. Um, as you can see on the, uh, on the right hand side, we've got some units, um, in, in a party and we're going to go into a trial that involves the break gauge. I'm going to show you some different examples, but before we do, I want to talk a little bit about the breaks, uh, the, br the break gauge in particular, just to kind of give you some more understanding of what it does and how it works. So the break gauge is a mechanic that was added to, uh, to some trial fights. Uh, at this point, it's a kind of a relatively old addition to the game. And when it came out, there were several ways that players dealt with it. Um, one would just be to equip units with weapons that target that enemy's weapon weaknesses. So every um, every character, every, every tr trial or, or boss that has a break gauge has certain weapons that will do more damage to the gauge than others. Um, so just by like, if a boss is weak to instruments, for example, and you put on two instruments um, on, on somebody and it attack them, then the break gauge is gonna go down more um, than it would if you were attacking with like, say two hammers or something like that. Okay, so that's, just, that's one way. The other way is that some units use skills that are built into their kit that break the gauge more than other attacks normally do. Um, so if if you're comparing like, okay, I'm, I'm using just attacking with two instruments or I'm using somebody who says, okay, when I use an instrument, I do more damage breaking the gauge using this skill, the second's gonna do more damage just cause it's better. Um, but that doesn't really get into like how it works specifically. Um, from the mechanics page on the wiki, which I've said over and over again, this is my favorite page on the wiki. Here's some more information about break gauges. Um, physical attacks, magical attacks, fixed attacks, hybrid attacks, and evoke damage will all affect the break gauge. So if you're wearing the right weapon and you're doing any of those, physical, magical, fixed, hybrid, and evoke, you will move that break gauge a little bit. Um, Esper damage, damage over time spells, or barehanded damage, which is to say I'm not wearing any weapons, I'm just punching the boss with my fist, um, it does not affect the break gauge. Um, so if you're like, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I've got a free action, I'm gonna cast Bahamut. Nope, that's not gonna do anything. You're better off just attacking the enemy with a normal attack. Um, your stats, the number of hits to whatever ability you use, and chaining will not affect the amount of damage dealt to the breakage. What I mean by that is, let's say I put myself, I, I give myself a stat buff, right? Um, I say I give myself a 300% stat buff and I think, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do more damage. Uh, no, it's actually not gonna do more damage um, because the stat, your stats don't matter, nor does breaking the boss. The Breaking the boss's stats with like a, um, a defense break does not make them more susceptible to your break damage um, or that at all. Also, let's say I use Oriole Ray, you know, an Oriole Ray skill has a bunch of hits and I'm thinking, oh great, this is going to do more hits, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move the gauge more. No, the damage that is done per hit is, is specific to that one action. So if it does 30 hits, it'll move it down in 30 increments, the same amount that a single hit skill would have moved it, just in 30 pieces. Um, so that's not going to help. Chaining does not increase the damage that you do to the break gauge either. So if you think oh, I'm going to, I'm going to put two bolting strikers together, we're wearing the right weapons. We're going to do that together. We're going to get this like 27 hit chain. Um, it's going to move the gauge down a whole bunch more because we're doing 300% more damage. No, chaining does not affect the amount of damage. So really the only thing that does impact the amount of damage is the number of attacks that target, uh, the gauge. So for example, if I have a unit who is wearing a single weapon and they use their normal attack, right? A single weapon normal attack hits one time, um, that will do one attack worth of damage to the gauge. Um, if you're um, 
if a single wielding unit wears um, does what does its normal attack two times. Um, so like for example, if they have they have some sort of ability that lets them attack twice when they when they do an attack, um, you know, Blizzard Orb or not not Blizzard Orb, um, Aurora Scarf or um, Yeti Combat Style lets their attack hit twice. That counts as two attacks. So a, a single attack is two attacks. You know, if you if you do it twice, it's two hits. Um, or if a unit is dual wielding, right, and they use their normal attack because a dual wield hits twice, right? Dual wield, attack, attack, two attacks. And if you have Aurora Scarf or Yeti Combat Style, now we're talking about four attacks. So, you know, the number of attacks that you do matters, but that's not all. Um, what type of weapons you use matter. So case number one, we've got a single unit um, uh, using um, using one weapon and they cast two skills. They do two attacks time 100 or 200 break damage. Okay. Um, or case B, I'm using two weapons and I use two skills, um, especially if they're the same weapon, right? Um, I'm doing two attacks times one plus one plus one, which is 200 equals 400, uh, 400 break damage. So you do more damage based on a bunch of different factors. Um, how many attacks you do, what kind of weapons you're using, um, how many weapons you're using. Those things matter a lot more than just, um, you know, what my stats are or if, if the boss is broken or if I have, you know, dragon killer or something like that. Mm -mm, that doesn't matter. What matters is how many attacks you do. All right. So, um, the last bit here is that some skills, like I said, are designed to break the gauge more when a unit with a specific weapon has, um, um, has it. And those skills are all broken into parts. There's usually a part that has like a damage score that does a little bit of damage to the boss and then a, um, break damage part. And, and that is entirely separate than the damage part. So like the damage part is good. It does a little bit of damage, but it doesn't affect the break gauge at all. The only part it does is the break gauge part. However, it's gonna matter a whole lot. So to demonstrate this, we're gonna, we're gonna go over five different examples. I've got five units in my party here. We're gonna go into a trial and we're, that has a break gauge and I'm gonna show you how the break gauge moves when we use these skills. Um, so bear with me here. Um, we're gonna go into uh, the Vortex and we're gonna go into Nemesis. Um, Chamber of the Fallen, and the very, very top one, Chamber of the Fallen, Heavenly Flames against Bahamut. Bahamut has a break gauge. So if we go into the strategy Moogle, right, and we see break gauge weaknesses. He is weak to attacks from short swords, swords, large swords, katanas, rods, bows, hammers, and guns. And if you can break his effect, right, if you, if you push the gauge all the way down, the effect is that you reduce his parameters. Um, and if he's broken, then he cannot use flare anymore. So you kind of want to break him so that he has lower stats on a top of the, the regular stat breaks that you put on him. Um, and, um, his attacks are just not going to work. So it's kind of nice to be able to do that. Um, although at this point, Bahamut's an old trial. So like we can just totally wipe out Bahamut without worrying about the break gauge at this point. But if you were struggling with this, pushing the break gauge kind of matters a lot. Okay. So Short swords, swords, large swords, katanas, rods, bows, hammers, guns. Cool. So let's get into it, and I'll take a. We'll, we'll show you a, um, show you some units here. I'm gonna I'm gonna take no companion, and here are my five units. So here's our examples. Um, we've got a, a Knights of Grand Shelt, and our Knights of Grand Shelt is going to be using um, just one weapon, right? They're two-handed STMR, and they're gonna be using this ability right here called Glorious Saber. Um, Glorious Saber um, is it does 100 um, physical damage, right? So it's just like a, a 1x modifier, 1x. One, one um, but when you are wearing a, um, a large sword and you use this skill, it does 400% more break damage than normal. It's kind of nice, right? It's a single hit, uh, one attack, and because he's wearing one weapon, it's going to hit one time, right? Uh, we're also gonna use Awaken Dragon Axtar. Uh, Awaken Dragon Axtar is wearing two katanas, right? And he has a skill lethal mind that is the same thing same modifier right attack base damage 1x 100 100 damage is 1x um and break gauge damage is increased uh to 400 percent when you are using a katana now remember i said he's wearing two katanas so he does more damage because he's wearing two weapons 
we're going to see a huge impact. Okay, cool. Now we're also going to look at Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh has, is unique because Gilgamesh can do um, breaks, normal stat breaks, right? Parameter reduction. This is normal breaks. Um, and uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, he also does very, very minimal damage with this. Uh, fixed damage, one. Um, but he's also got a bunch of break skills in his kit. Um, anything that says secret art, um, peerless katana, peerless sword, peerless spear, peerless axe, peerless mace. When he uses one of these five weapons, he does more damage um, to the break gauge. Uh, so peerless spear, for example, is just like the other ones, 100 damage, 400 boost damage. Um, but Bahamut's not weak to damage from spears. So we're going to see how that matters, if that matters, um, in the fight. Last example here, Mastermind Zon number one is wearing two short swords. And we know that um, Bahamut is weak to damage against short swords. So cool. Uh, we're going to see that effect, right? We're also going to compare that to another um, Zon who's going to be wearing a short sword and a gun. Remember, Bahamut's weak to damage from guns and short swords. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to compare the two. Um, regulars or first zone, which is two short swords and second zone, which is um, a short sword and a gun. And we're going to see how the gauge moves depending on each category. Um, so we're going to we're going to take a look here um, now um, because I said this matters. Knights of Grand Shelt is doing one attack. Axtar is doing two attacks. Gilgamesh is going to be doing two attacks with the wrong weapon type. Um, Zon is going to be doing 10 and other Zon is going to be doing 10. Let's get into it. Here's our Bahamut. And as you can see at the start of the fight, break age is full, uh, health is full, and we're gonna go ahead and try this out. So Knights of Grand Shelt's gonna go first. So kind of like our baseline, you know, one attack, um, one weapon, and he's used his glorious saber skill. Remember, we said this is one, one X modifier uh, and a 400% boost to break damage. So let's take a look. We're gonna go from 100% down to 2%. So he did 2% damage to the break gauge, which is like super not exciting, right? Uh, not very much damage at all. We're going to compare that to Awakened Dragon Axtar. Remember, he's wearing two weapons, um, two katanas, and he's using his lethal mind skill. One uh, one entry is going to go with, is going to hit twice, um, and we're going to get a lot more damage because he's wearing two weapons. So let's take a look. We're going to go from 98% down to... 88%. So that's a huge jump, right? Two weapons ended up doing 10% um, damage total. We went from 98 to 88 compared to one weapon, Knights of Grand Shield, doing the same skill, basically the same damage. Um, it did five times as much break damage, 2% versus 10%. Very cool right so obviously when you're when you're doing these break gauges it's it's better to do multiple hits it's better to wear two weapons um so that's kind of cool gilgamesh now remember i said he's wearing two weapons but he's he's gonna he's gonna say i think i know what i'm doing i'm wearing two spears but i'm gonna use the peerless axe skill right we'll go ahead and do it once peerless axe using spears I did zero break damage, right? Because I'm using the wrong weapon. It's very important that you use the right weapon with the right skill. Um, Peerless Spear, if he had used that one instead, he would have did a little more damage. Make sure you use the right one. Now this is where it gets interesting. So Mastermind Zon is wearing two short swords. So he's gonna he's gonna attack twice, whatever we attack we do. And we're gonna use this skill here, um, Vicious Strike, that attacks five times. So five times, it's actually gonna turn into 10 attacks because he's wearing two weapons. Let's see how we do. We're gonna, we're at, we're starting at 88% break, uh, break age. Let's see how we end up. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10. So we went from 88% down to 81%. So about a 7% uh, change in the boss's break status, right? Um, now that was with two short swords. So let's compare that to using one short sword and one gun. Same thing. We're going to use um, vicious strike attack five times turns into 10 attacks because two weapons. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna die here. Don't worry. <laughs> I just want to, I want to let all that go before I start talking again. Okay. So, we did 10 attacks on each of them. The first one went from 88% to 81%, so about a 7% change. Same thing here. We went from 81% uh, down to 74%, uh, which is, again, about a 70, about a 7% change. Um, so, the number of hits matters. The number of weapons matters. Um, the weapons that you choose to use matters making sure you target an enemy's weakness um and make sure you use if you've got the skills that do it um that was the best scenario right um two weapons um two katanas um and using the katana and the katana breakage skill from awakened dragon axtar did 10 percent gauge break um, in two attacks um, and you could triple cast that so that could do a little bit more we could have probably gotten down to 15 percent in a single break a uh, single turn from axtar um now, Knights of Grand Shell did 2% with one attack. Gilgamesh did 0% with two attacks with the wrong weapon. Um, and Zahn did 7%. So, Zahn and the two Zahns did pretty good. Um, but Axtar definitely ended up doing the best. Um, so, there you have it. Um, that's the break gauge in a nutshell, right? And that is different than these skills like uh, Thief in the Night right which breaks which breaks parameters parameters is like stat breaks that is different than um break gauge breaking break gauge breaking if we could push this all the way would apply an additional break and prevent bahamut from taking certain actions but um it's different than just lowering stats okay and that's really what you need to know about break gauges i mean at this point i mean you could bring a modern unit and just attack bahamut and kill bahamut in, in one shot we don't have to worry about the break gauge anymore, um, but on some fights, it really mattered a lot. Um, for example, a couple weeks ago, we had a um, piece of content that was locked to ice units, and using Axtar to break the gauge on turn one made that fight significantly easier because you could do more damage. Um, and Axtar could do that because if you had two katanas and he was using his katana skill, you just wiped out the gauge pretty quickly. Um, and that's the way it works. And sometimes it matters and sometimes it doesn't. It really just depends on the trial. Um, pay really close attention to what the strategy Moogle says to use as far as like what weapons. Um, and you'll generally do pretty well. Um, try and focus on units that have those skills that do um, do these, uh, these break gauges. Gilgamesh is kind of like the uh, the the uh, Swiss Army knife version, right? He's got he's got five different weapon categories he could use. Um, Axtar's got katanas. Knights of Grand Shelt has grand, uh, great swords. Um, there are other units though, like Vilk can do axes and claws. Um, it's kind of an outdated mechanic. We don't really use it a whole lot anymore. Um, so a lot of a lot of current modern units don't have it, um, but some units do. Um, and when it's when it's when it's useful, it's useful. Let's just say that, right? I'm gonna go ahead and duck out of this fight. You know, no no point in sticking around because Zon and Zon are just gonna get roasted. Um, and there you go. So I hope that is helpful for you in understanding how the break gauge works. And if you've got a question for next week's video, please let me know um, in the comments, whether on YouTube or in the Facebook group, and we'll do our best to try and uh, answer those questions and demonstrate it for you. That way, you've got a better understanding of what you're doing in the game. Um, in the meantime, I hope your uh, Clash of Wills is going really well. Um, this one has turned out to be kind of a, <laughs> kind of a, um, uh, as some would say, a cupcake boss. Um, you know, not too difficult. So I hope you're doing okay with it, um, and um, have some fun with it. You know, take some different units, do some different clears. You know, see what you can see what you can work out and go for that rank one. Um, you know, have fun with it. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna let you go and have a good one, and we'll see you next week for another video where we talk about exciting stuff.